Well, this is another one of those stories that's probably going to be buried by pharma. Actually, uh, this is very important because uh, in hospitals, a lot of times what happens is there's some real nasty germs that get around, staph infections that are totally resistant to all kinds of antibiotics. They can be spread any kind of way, usually by skin-to-skin -skin contact. That's why doctors, nurses, and other healthcare professionals um, you know, we constantly try to wear gloves, but, you know, you really can't do too much about it. They even have other high-tech uh, instruments that they sometimes uh, they'll bring into a room. It's like a light device that, be, you you know, shoots lights all over the place. It's like an ultraviolet, violet, and it supposedly will knock out every type of germ in there when nobody's in the room, that is, you know, to sterilize the room. But, um, you know, this is something interesting because it's actually a thousand-year-old concoction it goes all the way back to Nottingham, England, a 9th century Anglo-Saxon remedy for eye infections that can be used uh, for all kinds of staph infections. Now, they're not really stating what the hell it is exactly because they're, they're saying it's, uh, it's got copper and bile salts that can kill bacteria and a combination of garlic family of plants to make chemicals, but they're not telling you the exact uh, mix but they found out the exact mix. They were totally, absolutely blown away by just how effective the combination of ingredients was. This is a thousand years old, over a thousand years old, actually from the ninth century Anglo-Saxon remedy. Now, will you see this in the uh, modern world? Probably not, because why? It's not lucrative. You know, I can actually I can even tell you that Dr. Simoncini, um, Tullio Simoncini, actually found in the records a thousand years ago that they were using baking soda to treat forms of cancer. And baking soda sodium is plain old sodium bicarbonate. But, you know, there are people who will be arguing about that left and right, especially scientists. Now, I am not a scientist, but I could tell you one thing. Um, you know, I, sometimes people like to try to play their little games and, you know, argue with their credentials. I could say, yeah, I don't have a medical background, but my family has a medical background. But as far as uh, actual intelligence, well, I could say I'm fairly intelligent, you know. Uh, I was uh, who's who of uh, for amongst uh, amongst uh, students for scholastic high school scholastic achievement. I received a uh, full scholarship to a highly prestigious university. Got letters from congressmen. Uh, I was consistently in the top one percent of SATs. Um, I had you know I don't want to keep you know saying too much about this, but you know there's a lot of people that try to play the little game with the, that you know oh you're just dumb. Well, you know what? I may talk working class New Jersey, New York area, but it does not mean I'm stupid. No way in hell. You know, I don't like freaking playing the phony baloney game. That's really what it is. It makes me want to puke. But to tell you the truth, I think they're not going to they're going to suppress this information because it's just like anything. Why the hell did they not use colloidal silver as a topical sterilizer in hospitals? It would work great. Maybe colloidal silver is going to do like all the miracle cures in a body like some people believe it does in the alternative world. They think it cures everything there is in the body. It doesn't exactly work that way, but as a topical antiseptic, it could blow away everything out there. And you know what? It would save millions of dollars in these fancy antiseptics they use in the hospitals for like washing hands and sterilizing equipment. But no, they don't use it. No, they don't use it. Because why? They they got somebody's got an angle on something and they want to charge money for a racket. So that's why I don't think this is actually going to come about. But you know, it's kind of interesting that you're talking about it contains uh, copper and bile, bile salts. A actually, copper is known to be an antibacterial, almost like colloidal silver. Now, you're not really supposed to drink colloidal, sil colloidal copper, but it can be very good topically to uh, sterilize things. Garlic? Garlic has been one of those things out there for ages that have been used in all kinds of medicine going all the way back to the Greek and Roman times. As a matter of fact, I'll put out videos on copper. As a matter of fact, copper supplementation has been known to uh, thwart arthritic conditions in the future. But you know, the, the, the talking head scientists will disagree. Some of them will, some of them won't. But, you know, I realize, you know, what kind of people I, I get enemies on here, and they, they seem to be the most highfalutin yo-yos out there. They think they're God in the clouds. And it comes down to it, you know, even though I talk plain, I have the education. I'm well-read, and I constantly read all the time, and I'm constantly researching. And I don't play games with this alternative stuff. If something's garbage, I don't put it out. And, you know, if something's exaggerated, I don't, I don't exaggerate along with the rest of them just for views. As a matter of fact, you can look at my Ebola video 
about colloidal silver not being a cure for Ebola. It may help a little bit. You know, a lot of people don't want to hear that information. They just don't want to hear it because it's not popular, but I'm not going to, I don't, you know, I put out the truth. You know, that's exactly what it is. But this actually is something, I don't know if they're actually going to release the exact formula, but it goes back over a thousand years. And it goes to show you that there, there has been a lot of knowledge over the years. And, you know, everybody in the modern society poo-poos all this stuff like, oh, these people don't know anything. It's snake oil. Get your tinfoil hat out and everything. But they don't want to, they don't want to. They don't want to hear it because why? It doesn't line their pocket. So they can't sit on easy street, just sit there and write a big fat, um, you know, a big fat invoice to somebody for some concoction they got, you know, passed on from pharmaceutical to line your fat pockets. There's a lot of stuff from nature that does work, but you got to be aware that, you know, there's limits to some of this stuff and there's a lot of exaggerations too. But this looks very promising because. You know, this actually said the scientists were absolutely blown away by just how effective the combination of ingredients was. And usually that's really what the case is, combination of ingredients. And, you know, this was on something where everything didn't work. Everything didn't work. You know, actually I put out stuff about vitamin C. And vitamin C pretty much, well, in mega doses, mega, mega doses, and you're talking like hundreds and hundreds of times of what they consider the recommended daily requirement is, uh, will actually work pretty much against every damn thing out there. But, you know, they're never going to recommend that. Why? Because it's dirt cheap. Just like a lot of different things. But beware of the alternative world because there's a lot of exaggerations out there. You know, I only put out some suggestions. I don't know if it's guaranteed to work in your case, but there have been a lot of you know, successful reports and a lot of these alternative things have worked. But this is a brand new one. I never heard of this. But it kind of makes sense because of the uh, copper and bile, bile salts which kill bacteria in a garlic family of plants. Garlic family of plants, actually scientists are now starting to think that uh, garlic is going to be brought back because there's becoming a lot more uh, drug-resistant bacteria out there. But then again, maybe not, because, like I said, it's not lucrative. You know, anything that's from a plant, forget about it. You know, if you can grow it, then again, I guess if you got Monsanto in there and they control the plants, maybe it will be lucrative. But it's time to freaking fight back from these professional cute talking yo-yos. I hate their guts. And, uh, you know, they will uh, they'll, they'll constantly be trying to attack me left and right. Now, actually, one other thing, actually, along these lines, too... You know, it may be the positive offset frequencies that can actually knock out a lot of these germs. And a lot of times, people haven't been trying that type of um, technology, too. Because in some cases, I think it really is extremely effective um, just by feedback from people. Um, but, you know, sometimes it's very difficult to diagnose what exactly what the bug is. So you got to really try a lot of different things. But then again, stuff like garlic is very much a catch-all antibiotic. That's why it's been prescribed by doctors going all the way back to the Roman and Greek times. But then again, this particular formula, they're not really giving you out exactly what it consists of. You know, it's, it's pretty, you know they said it's ingredients such as onion, garlic, part of a cow's stomach, brewed in a copper vessel. They're not telling you exactly how it's done. And obviously, they're probably not going to tell you exactly how it's done because if people knew how it was done, they would do it. And uh, they put some people out of business. They're just going to tell you, oh, yeah, we found this stuff. And, you know, that's the end of the story, right? Right? In the meantime, you know how many people come out of hospitals with staph infections? It's one of the biggest freaking problems going. As a matter of fact, kidney dialysis, uh, you know, that's one of the big things where you can get infections left and left and right. You also, when you get cancer treatments or medicines that weaken the immune system, um, and, you know, they talk about inject legal drugs, but actually there's legal drugs out there, pharmaceutical. Even Advil makes your immune system drop drastically. Do you know that? A lot of people don't know that, but, you know, that's a fact. Advil makes your immune system drop drastically. Keep taking those pain pills and you don't have an immune system. How's that? Great, huh? So, you know, you can get sick from just staying in a hospital and sick with something they can't cure. But then again, maybe it is curable. But then again, the secret is still a secret because they're really not telling you exactly what it is. So I imagine, you know, you could probably try your best and say, 
I'm going to pick some onions and garlic and drink out of copper vessels and uh, do my best. <laughs> but, uh, you know, maybe that ain't going to do it. So that's not the real secret. And the secret is still a secret because they're being vague. They're being vague. Why don't they publish it? I don't know. The reason is I could see why. Because it's going to put somebody out of business, right? What the hell else is new, right? You know, the crooked professionals on the top, they're weasels. That's all i got to tell you. They really are. And, you know, they try to come out with all their freaking uh, highfalutin talk and, you know, how many credentials they got. And, I, you know, I don't, you know, they'll try to attack me personally and say, I don't know this and that. Hey, i got plenty of education. You know, i got 30 credits of freaking mathematics, higher mathematics. I was an accounting major. The 24 credits is actually what's considered a math major. So I actually have two majors plus. And I was in a math club. I was also, you know very much involved in sports and uh, all kinds of different things like that. And so it's like, you know, they try to attack you on a personal basis. And, you know, whereby, you know, which, which I see as total spite work. But, you know, the, the problem is it's almost like, uh, you remember that guy Columbo on the freaking TV show? You know, he comes across like a plain talking detective. He doesn't look like nothing. Uh, he did know his stuff. And I got to tell you one thing. That's exactly the game I play. I do know my stuff. And I will not steer you wrong on anything. But, you know, on the same token, I will not definitely point to this is the exact perfect answer. I really just point to the situation where it's going to be probably, most likely, a good answer. So, uh, this looks like very promising, but it's going to take some digging to find out what the heck the exact recipe is but you know it's kind of interesting that it includes onions copper vessels and um, garlic you know that tells you something right there